This is day 83 of the October 7th war. We begin today with some of the latest figures. Since Hamas's unprovoked massacre on October 7th, over 13,000 rockets have been launched towards Israel. These rockets are launched in violation of international law, whether being fired from civilian areas, fired towards civilians in Israel, or fired from designated UN demilitarized zones. Shame on the terror organizations and international actors who cover up for these daily provocations. Since yesterday, another three IDF soldiers have been killed in action, bringing the IDF's tally to 501. The fallen soldiers are 32-year-old Major Dvir David Fima, 24-year-old Captain Neria Zisk, and 22-year-old Sergeant First Class Asaf bin Khastubul. We send our heartfelt condolences to their families. Hamas continues to hold 129 people hostage since the 10-7th massacre, many of whom require life-saving medications, which the International Red Cross continues to deny them. We remind you that even before 10-7, Hamas held another four Israeli hostages in violation of international law. Hamas's very existence is a threat to Israelis' way of life, and we will continue to explore every avenue to secure our hostages' release and the dismantling of this terrorist regime. And now an operational update. Yesterday evening, the elite IDF forces destroyed three of Hamas's terror tunnels, which were found both in the Rantisi hospital and near a school building. One of the tunnel shafts located in a girl's school was 20 meters deep and even included a fully functional elevator. Instead of investing in their children's future, Hamas terrorists funneled money towards a diabolical terror machine. We continue to demand that the UN, and in particular UNICEF, call out Hamas's perversion of hospital and children's, children's school buildings. Though these discoveries are horrible, they are no longer surprising. The more our forces expose Hamas's infrastructure, the more we realize how much they systematically betray their own people. They need to go. And now an update from the Northern Front. Israelis woke up this morning to yet another barrage of rockets launched by Hezbollah terrorists towards Israeli towns. To those international organizations and heads of state who persistently call for de-escalation in the region, now is your moment to speak up. Since this war began with Hamas's unprovoked massacre, you have watched IDF forces act with both precision and restraint in dealing with Iran's proxy in the north. With each passing day, Iranian proxies continue to become more brazen in the international community's silence is nothing but wind in their sails. Enough is enough. Speak up now instead of later criticizing our decisive response. The authoritarian Iranian regime seeks bloodshed and chaos. They publicly refer to the United States as the big Satan and refer to Israel as the small Satan, while also calling to destroy our states. Their proxies desperately aim to destabilize our region. Do not side with the aggressors. Just as we did not start a war with Hamas, we do not wish to start a war with Hezbollah, yet we remain more than capable of wiping out any threats in the North. To Iran and your proxies, we send a clear message. Do not test our resolve. It would be a terrible, terrible mistake. And finally, we are indignant following President Erdogan's despicable and nonsensical comparison between Adolf Hitler and our Prime Minister. Not only do his statements twist reality beyond recognition, but they also shamefully disrespect the legacy and victims of the Holocaust. The Turkish president exhibits both moral and historical confusion which have no bounds. And as the, our Prime Minister said, Erdogan openly commits genocide against the Kurds and routinely imprisons journalists who dare shed light on his cruelty. And we are expected to heed his moral condemnations? We condemn Erdogan's remarks in the strongest possible terms. 
In Israel, we will continue to fight against pure evil while upholding the highest standards of military operational conduct. If corrupt leaders criticize us along the way, we leave them to fall on the wrong side of history. I am now happy to take your questions. The first question comes from Mayan Lubel of Reuters. We would appreciate comment on report published by the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, citing what it describes as a, quote, rapid deterioration of human rights in the West Bank and urging Israeli authorities to end violence against the Palestinian population there. Thank you. Thank you for your question. We have seen this report. And uh, first, I'll say that we are deeply concerned that it shows what we already knew, that Palestinians are arming 15-year-olds and telling them to confront IDF forces. It is outrageous. Now, the rest of the report, I would say, it is um, quite ridiculous in the way that it completely belittles the major security threats to Israelis emerging from Judea and Samaria. You know, unlike many in the international community and at the United Nations even, Israel takes Palestinian words, actions, threats very, very seriously. We believe the terrorists when they say that they will finish off the one and only Jewish state in the world. You know, they say it, they chant it, they, they write it, they act on it. We don't need any more proof. Uh, Hamas leaders are saying that they would carry out another October 7th massacre again and again and again. So we will not allow it, not in the South and, and not in the West. So um, again, as for this report, our forces are operating in Judea and Samaria to keep that front as quiet as possible, despite the many challenges that we have there. Uh, uh, you, you have their Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad strongholds. There is, uh, they're, certainly, they're certainly there, they, they, they wish to hurt Israelis, and we're making sure that they will lack the capabilities to do that, even though they have the desire, as we know. And uh, yes, we arrested hundreds of terror suspects in that area, and we will continue to do whatever it takes to maintain our security. Uh, now, uh, as this report indicates, do security checks complicate the day-to-day -day life of uninvolved civilians? Well, to a certain extent, the answer is yes. But the ones to blame are the terrorists, people involved in terrorist activity. And as for um, what the report said about uh, so-called settler violence, you see, if people violate the law, we prosecute them, regardless of their religious or political affiliation. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very, very clear. He said that nobody should be taking the law into their own hands. Uh, the numbers are actually showing a significant decrease in an already marginal phenomena. Uh, and, and the overwhelming majority, it's important to mention here, of the so-called uh, settler community are law-abiding citizens. Uh, do not mistake the exception for the rule. The next question comes from Jim Williams of mm -hmm. Zenger International News. Uh, Jim asks about communication between Israel and the U.S. He says, Secretary Austin has said that any more aggressive military actions by the Iranian proxies will be met with force. Is the Israeli and the U.S. on the same page? 100%, Jim. We are on the same page. Secretary Austin, when he was here just um, a bit more than a, a week and a half ago, I believe, he also said that the U.S. support to Israel's just cause in this war is, quote, unshakable. And um, we are in lockstep with our American partners in what pertains to the goals of this war, uh, which are, of course, to eliminate the Hamas terrorist regime, to bring back all hostages home, and to make sure that uh, this enclave will never pose a terror threat to Israelis again. Uh, we have been communicating with the White House on a daily, even hourly basis. As you know, um, U.S. officials uh, are ha visited here several times and will continue to do so. And uh, we, we keep communicating and, and we see eye to eye, again, about what pertains to uh, the goals of this war. We all want the same. And that right there was the Israeli government update from spokesperson Tal Heinrich. She joins the show pretty frequently to provide the latest information and answer questions as the war is now on day 83.